Hey there, guys. This is Dan Dix here reporting for Press for Truth on the spectacle that was last night's debate, which really played out more like a WWE wrestling match. Uh, perhaps it can be better summed up as uh, this. Old man yells at old man. And uh, indeed, it was quite the spectacle. And I'm not talking about between these two individuals right here. Uh, no, it was quite the display between these two guys right here, as James Wood points out. James Wood says President Trump crushed his opponent, Chris Wallace, head-to-head -head in the debate. Uh, there was also another fellow wandering around muttering to himself. <laughs> so uh, we're going to look at some of what these mutterings were. Of course, uh, Biden is uh, referring to Trump as a racist last night, and today he doubled down with this tweet. He says there's no other way to put it. The President of the United States refused to disavow white supremacists on the debate stage last night as he shows a picture of Kyle Rittenhouse. It says, as we saw in Kenosha. Well, his, uh, Kyle's uh, lawyer has recently chimed in saying, I hereby demand that Joe Biden immediately retract his false accusation that Kyle is a white supremacist and militia member responsible for violence in Kenosha. So we're going to look at that, but we're also going to look at the main takeaway that I see from uh, what Trump has to say moving forward, especially when it comes to the question to lock down or not to lock down. I think that's going to be the main uh, uh, debate point moving forward as we head into 2021 and who is going to be the commander in chief when it comes to COVID-19. As Candace Owen correctly points out here, Trump's highlight is acknowledging that the people don't want shutdowns and they're suffering from alcoholism, drugs, divorce, and suicide. Biden is just completely scripted and misleading America. Americans aren't scared about COVID. They're scared about more lockdowns. And indeed, that is the case. So we're going to look at that. Um, we can clearly see that uh, Trump is not concerned with uh, wearing masks as as Biden's wife is, uh, where here we see Trump and, uh, and, and his wife without a mask. And Biden's wife comes up to greet him and even gives him a kiss while still wearing the mask. Uh, Trump and his wife, of course, are not doing so. His entire family at this debate also uh, took off their masks once they sat down at their seats because, guys, they're not drinking the Kool-Aid like Biden and the rest of his followers are. So we're going to take a look at all of this and much more in this video, guys. But before we do, I'd ask that you check me out here at Patreon, patreon.com slash Press for Truth. This is where you can sign up for a reoccurring monthly contributions uh, to my efforts. Uh, any amount helps, guys. I'm trying to reach the goal of 5,000. I'm almost at 1,000. So if you appreciate my efforts, please check the link in the description below to find out how you can sign up here at Patreon for a monthly reoccurring contribution. All right, so let's start with this, guys. Biden calls Trump a racist as they clash over Black Lives Matter protests and race relations during the first presidential debate. Former Vice President Joe Biden on Tuesday called President Donald Trump a racist during a heated exchange over issues of race and protests against law enforcement. This is a president who has used everything as a dog whistle to try to generate racist hatred, racist division, Biden said during the first presidential debate. He argued that Trump pours gasoline on the fire to stoke his base over racial issues. Trump refused on Tuesday night to condemn white supremacists and white uh, right-wing groups who've engaged in violence against Black Lives Matter protesters. <laughs> Are you kidding me, business insider? That Trump refused to condemn white supremacists and right-wing groups who engaged in violence against Black Lives Matter protesters? First of all, guys, these are not protesters. These are violent rioters. And Kyle Rittenhouse is not a white supremacist. In fact, he has been, in my opinion, proved innocent. As I showed in this video, victims file lawsuit against Facebook and Kyle Rittenhouse despite 11-minute video proving his innocence. And uh, despite that fact, 
we still have Biden here tweeting out that he isn't innocent, that he's somehow a white supremacist who caused the violence there. Well, as I said, Lynn Wood chimed in saying, formal demand for public retraction is being prepared for Biden and the Harris campaign on behalf of Kyle Rittenhouse, and rightly so. I also hereby demand that Joe Biden immediately retract his false accusation that Kyle is a white supremacist and militia member responsible for violence in Kenosha. So, uh, you know, a, a lot of, um, of Biden's talking points have already been uh, disproven to not be true. Um, so this is just not surprising that he would take this route. But as I said, I think the more important takeaway, especially leading into 2021, as the powers that ought not to be are using the COVID-1984 nightmare to clamp down on our rights, is the fact that Trump's not buying it, and, and Biden is. Uh, as we said here, let's take a look at some of these photos. Um, the Trump family arrived at the event in their masks, um, but then, of course, uh, as soon as they got into the venue, they uh, took them all off, and uh, rightly so. And Biden's uh, family, of course, uh, didn't do so. Here you can see um, the differences between the two. Trump showing, yeah, I have one, but I put it on when it makes sense to wear one, and uh, here's his family once again um, refusing to wear the masks while on the inside. Now, some are saying this is breaking uh, the, the rules <laughs> of this particular venue, um, but I, I, I think this shows uh, a strong leadership in, in the face of this, um, of, uh, of COVID-1984. So let's take a look at this. Trump says Biden will destroy the country with lockdowns at the first presidential debate. Um, President Trump defended his push to reopen the country amid the ongoing coronavirus pandemic at Tuesday's first presidential debate, claiming opponent Joe Biden would destroy America by keeping it shuttered. Uh, he, he will destroy this country. You know, a lot of people between drugs and alcohol and depression, when you start shutting it down, the president said of an unprecedented shuttering of the economy due to the pandemic, they're hurting people by keeping them closed. They're hurting people, he continued during their face-to-face -face showdown. It's like being in prison, he said. Look at what's going on with divorce. Look at what's happening with alcoholism and with drugs. It's a very, very sad thing, the commander-in-chief went on, and correctly so. Biden accused Trump of throwing the American people under the bus and said he was risking U.S. lives by pushing for Americans to return to work. Um, he has no intention of doing anything about making it better for all of you at home in terms of your health and your safety and in your schools, Biden responded. Trump has promised a V-shaped victory of the economy, but Biden accused his opponents of having no plan. So, uh, I mean, there, there you have it, guys. Again, what I think is, is going to be the bigger takeaway here is that Trump is anti-lockdown. Um, and, and, and Biden is pro lockdown. Um, Biden says it has to be done, uh, in a more responsible way. Uh, meanwhile, Trump points out that, look, the longer you delay this, the more problems you're going to have in the long run with, uh, uh, depression and, and suicides and, uh, alcoholism and, and divorce and all the things that he correctly mentioned. Um, so as I said, guys, I think that's going to be one of the more important things to focus on moving forward is the issues of the government's response to COVID-19. So we'll see where they go with that uh, in the second debate coming up in, a, I believe it is, a week from today. Um, so I'm going to continue to uh, to watch these. Of course, it's very interesting. I've been watching these presidential debates for quite a long time, my friends, and I'm proud to say Today, that as uh, as a Canadian watching this, uh, we got our own elections happening. We got these ones watching. I'm proud to say that I have in fact uh, never once taken part in this wrestling match, ballerina choreographed play. I have never once voted, and uh, I'm proud to say that. And uh, I strongly encourage the viewers of this channel um, to stop going to the polls. And if you want to better understand my views on why that's important, I put out a, a documentary, essentially, a two-part series called The Democracy Deception. If you go to altcensored.com right now and you type in Press for Truth, The Democracy Deception, uh, you'll find a link to part one 
right here, the democracy deception. And this outlays, as I said, my views on why I don't vote. And then I get into part two, the democracy deception part two. What's the alternative? Obviously, if I have a lot of bad things to say about democracy, the question always comes, well, Dan, what are you proposing as an alternative to this then? Do you think we should go back to a monarchy? Is that what you're saying? Uh, do you think we should have a dictatorship? What are you saying here? Well, if you want to get my uh, uh, fully well-presented views on that, uh, please watch this two-part series um, called The Democracy Deception Part 1 and 2. Uh, part 2 is what is the alternative? And you'll see why I don't vote, guys, and why I think you, uh, particularly in America, might want to think twice about choosing the lesser evil moving forward into 2021 as well. So that's all for today, guys. Just wanted to uh, show you the fiasco, the, the choreographed wrestling match that is the presidential debates. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Was there a clear winner or is it all just a big, uh, you know, a, a show? Uh, for us to be di essentially distracted by because the powers that ought not to be, I believe, are truly pulling the strings of both of these puppets. L let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And if you appreciate my efforts to bring you this information, please click that thumbs up button, share this video. And don't forget to check us out at pressfortruth.ca slash donate. There you can find a link to my Patreon where you can sign up for a monthly reoccurring amount. Guys, any amount helps as I continue to... Uh, uh, press for truth moving forward in the post-COVID-1984 nightmare. So that's all for today, guys. I want to thank you once again for watching. Stay tuned. We're going to have more video reports coming soon. This is Dan Dix reporting for Press for Truth. We all want truth. truth. The truth will set you free. free, free.